I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. Impossible, it must have been something else. Oh, of course, that mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... <laughs> Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us. The workers took the artifact and placed it into the cabinet of curiosities. It became part of mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. Ah yes, my mother's studio. She was an authenticator and this was her cabinet of curiosities. I never saw the point. What does it matter if some artefact is real or not? It still exists. One of the most ridiculous fakes I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. I remember this cosy blanket. It was perfect for... Wigwam! Oh, that was a joy to build them. Imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. <sighs> Watkinson and Holman, Chapter 1, by Wallace Deorum. Oh, Mycroft. He always acts so serious, but then reads tripe like this. John, if I remember correctly, you couldn't put this book down. Another fake Holy Grail. Its owner claimed to be the heir of King Arthur. Scarcely believable. He also insisted a deadly rabbit was hunting him. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. <laughs> Officer Luciano J. Placido. Reliable and driven. I recognize Mycroft's handwriting. K. 
carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. This drawer was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe today's the day. Oh, Sherry. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. Even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. The so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. And this one was brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake. Eighteen fifty two, Bingley, West Yorkshire. Clearly, it was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan Mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. The full plate armour of Sir Robert Saunford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armour is armour, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Maybe you take it instead of your pistol. I'm starting to remember something. Mother said this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish Viscount. So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. It's a pity how many amazing things are missing from this room. Ah, 
Oh, I remember these. We used them to spar together until Mycroft found out and forbade us from using real weapons. Ah, the memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. He closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him. I remember how angry Mycroft was about these marks. He called it a frivolous, childish endeavour. The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if... A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? I think this is what we're looking for. Made it. So what's there? <laughs> Single malt whiskey. My cross favourite. Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. Otto Richter. This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met.
I used this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. Books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface. I feel it. Come on, Sherry. Let's go outside. Wait. Did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan. Amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. Sherry, look! We've got a parcel here. Hurry up and let's see what's inside. An invitation that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. I think we deserve a rest.
do exercise some restraint, Mr. Holmes. Find the who's and we'll handle the why's. Curious thing you'll see all day, Hamlet staged by children. Welcome to the Manchios Mansion. May I ask you something? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Hmm. Welcome, sir. I do hope you enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. All right. What if I write an article about these people here? Can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? <laughs> My goodness, Sherlock, they made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood, just wine. The whore, is it a guess? Sherlock! Friend! I wasn't sure you'd come. Werner, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. And what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Those who know me would say I'm incapable of it. <laughs> Nonsense. I refuse to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. Huh. You may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. A time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you with a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's wine, of course, and something to smoke, or perhaps an artificial paradise? Yes, something more spiritual, a potentiator to sharpen the mind. A 7% solution of, well, that'd be telling, but you must try it. My mind is my most valuable asset, and a finely tuned instrument I will not risk impeding its function. My ultimate duty is to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. Of course I do. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. <laughs> That's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next, visit the victims, ensure justice is served in the courts? And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, just like truth. There is little to be gained from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. Now I must insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. If this solution truly does assist with thinking, then well, perhaps it would be 
puerile to overlook an opportunity to study it. I'll take it with me. Yes, Sherlock. Very good. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Werner? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. <laughs> My God, was he here this whole time? This crude tattoo partially covers a slave branding. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. This golden. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. This worm-like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. A blunt force trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. He died right here. Werner, care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little... exuberant. It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes. Some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts. But I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh dear. Did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Manchios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. All right. Pull yourself together, Werner. Mr. Manchios is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. How did you discover the body? In between guzzles of alcohol? I was set to perform in a fecundity ride with Fabio and came to inquire further. It was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Manchios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then, we were filling time. Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat 
that Wallace fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance and more. What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents Gaia, the earth. As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principal. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the intercourse is not? I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but it would explain the colour of your cheeks. The fertility rite marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer too. I haven't seen her today, actually. When you discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later, only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. The herbs here are salvia divinorum. They have a slight hallucinogenic effect to emphasize the ceremony. The ointment smells mouse-like. I presume it is an aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. This oil has a slight aroma of flowers and olive. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus, drawn in a hurry. The sign reminds me of the astrological symbol for Mars. Similar to the guests' robes, apart from the bloodstains. Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio, Manchos. Would you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. The key 
key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. This is a different ritual. How can anyone accept such behavior? A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. The pitcher is empty, but with puddles around it. Blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Props, decorations and tools for a more detailed set. What about a quick pillow fight? Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? Blood. A sturdy bottle met a not so sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. An open wound spoiled the carpet. A bloody handprint on an armchair. The wounded person was here for some time. A person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. There appear to be no further traces leading to the altar. So, Sherry. Do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. 
I think I can deduce what happened here. The bottle was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloodied robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you alright? You're on the floor, not moving. I think I know what happened here. Distract me. It's not easy to play blindfolded. <laughs> See, nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So, who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone, and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all.
The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. Sherlock, don't forget to find the information I need before the guests leave. Oh, there's beauties. Manchester's is the best, as always. <laughs> Kurt Manchios, I presume? I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I don't want anyone to hear us. I need to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio and you had access to it, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guest somewhere, and Santos, oh yes, he will be busy with the servants, or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Please, ah, filth, you're under arrest. Committed a crime, and now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience, Your Grace. I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? Thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in his letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes? Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? You knew my mother? Not personally, no. Not exactly. I was working on the paperwork for that case. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? Perhaps we can negotiate. I could be quite useful. Yeah. Got you hooked, right? You know what? 
Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Oswald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. If you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Let's make a start then. Partner. We should have listened to the guests there. Now I have nothing to write about. I can't go back to prison. contract to solve the case. Found Werner. Werner, are you all right? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. Ha! What did you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway, I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder... Suppose you couldn't get the proof to your truth. Would you tell a lie to the guard that enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? I... I suppose that... In the pursuit of justice, if truth was ineffectual, then one must resort to other means to achieve the outcome. I would do it. Oh, Sherlock, that is sweet of you. Alas, if the police are after hard evidence, then I suppose neither truth nor lie would do. That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. Do not give up hope. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I can't follow you here. I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you. Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. I know you can untangle this mess. Good day, Mr. Manchios. I am Constable Oswald's partner in this investigation. Be quick and gentle. Some of your colleagues are untrained boars. 
Although I don't mind meeting young officers. The new blood here. If you cooperate in finding Fabio's murderer, there will be no need to meet with the Boars again. That voice. Venus, friend? You're the policeman. What a disappointment. Only an undercover agent can scour a ditch full of deviants. I am a consulting detective, although I'm capable of replacing the entire department through my consultations. Sharp-tongued, I like it. May I presume this tongue will get us out of this trouble? I would be so indebted and glad to repay you. Nothing's changed. I'm looking for the murderer. That's the only way to get us out of trouble. But it shouldn't take much time, correct? We're all busy, after all. I need to examine you first. You are a little over the top with your use of makeup, Mr. Manchios. Is it so difficult for you to acknowledge your age? Well, Sherlock, that's easy for you to say to an old man when you look as though you are barely 15. But still, it shouldn't be an issue for someone of your status. For people of my age, it isn't an issue, no. But the younger ones can be so afraid of wrinkles and grey flecks. I have to adapt. Such a methodical man who cares for his body but misses the soap under his fingernails. Are you so impatient, or perhaps even impulsive? I wouldn't call myself that. Silly little details. If I missed it, it wasn't important. Or rather, it was less important than who or what I was focused on. Mr. Vogel told me a little about your Parsis, but I would like to know more directly from you. I'm all yours, Sherlock. You have me arrested and locked here, with you alone. Why did you invite Mr. Vogel as your special guest? He's a pretty fellow. He's capable of surprising the public. He has a talent for saying words that no one else would wish to either say or hear. I suppose I can't argue with that. He is a free addition to the eccentricity of the party, which is fine by me, as long as it enhances my party. I'd like to know who you usually invite to your parties. Free minds who are able to leave reality for an evening, who can taste forbidden fruit without prejudice. There is nothing that quite spices up life like these parties, assuming one is old enough and has worked many years for the good of one's country. All oh, true laborers, I see. What was Fabio like? His personality, his habits? Anything you can tell me? He was the brightest star of my parties. Young, magnetic, and full of energy. I don't even want to mention his beauty. Otherwise, I'll be sobbing. An expensive champion, I imagine. His performances were flawless. He deserved his payment. Do you think he was murdered because of money? Possibly. What about the other guests? Were they used to opening their wallets as well? I wouldn't restrict my guests from anything. I'm sure Fabio received a few coins from others for his services. I appreciate your cooperation, Mr. Manchios. Wait just a moment, I have something to check.
you'd better ask someone else. I've no idea about that. That's not something I know much about. You'd better ask someone else. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. Do you have any idea who tipped off the police to raid your mansion, Mr. Manchios? Of course. It was you. I could even say you shut up to me in here. A good guess, but the wrong one. The fellow who did that was Mr. Pinchetti, your major domo. What? Santos? But how could he even know? If he's not the murderer himself, the ungrateful swine, he has dared to besmirch my reputation. Not a very eloquent choice of words. What should I call him then, since he's a snitch? Make him talk, Sherlock. I'm quite certain he knows more about the murder than he has told the police. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. You bought an expensive pair of cufflinks for Fabio. Were they his price? Or were they a tip for an exclusive show? It was pure business. Fabio escorted me a few times. I was merely showing my gratitude. This pair cost a small fortune. You must be extremely grateful then. Tell me more. You've thrust a knife in an exposed nerve, Sherlock. Yes, he was my protege and my beacon also. With my experience and his beauty, we could have achieved anything. I had faith in him. I would have made him. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. You are Matista, Fabio's friend. This body, yes, it's Matista. But it's a mere shell that will die someday. Just like Fabio. Fabio knew the risks. Selling his body to degenerates who hid behind robes and masks, it could not end well. That's only your distorted understanding of safety. Officers here, they wear robes and masks too. It's a dangerous lifestyle, but it's not as though we were given many other choices. I'm just here to ask questions and find Fabio's murderer. It will not bring Fabio back. Fabio and yourself were slaves, am I correct? You have a similar branding on your body. Yes. It was a long time ago. Couldn't help but also notice fresh cuts upon your forearms. The cuts helped me to forget my past, to cover the old wounds and 
hide them. How did you escape? Something happened. One night the master fell down the stairs. I made him fall, and he died. We ran away that day. We managed to get on a ship and traveled here, to Cordona. Fabio and I started a new life here. It was very hard at first, but it became better with time. Until today. The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite, sometimes. I know I can handle the news. Did you hear Basilio Capello? In the police. Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. Good day. Your ticket, please, if you want me to help you. We'll talk later. Don't take up space, then. I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. Ah, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. An emergency kit for boredom. Not the time for privacy. Werner's personal sketchbook. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials K.M. in the corner. A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. A key to the altar room. That's not for bedtime reading. That's not for bedtime reading. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. Thank you, officer.
I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. So, the police found a letter from Fabio in your pocket. I cannot tell if it was truly in my pocket at all. Perhaps it was placed there later. Well, that is one hypothesis. If it were true, then how did it get there? No clue. But this night has been rather eccentric. Such a detail could have easily eluded me. Indeed. Do you recall reading it? I can't remember that either. But I tend to respect privacy. Reading others' personal notes is not one of my perversities. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. I'm doing my part. You should do yours too, Holmes. Don't look at them, they'll serve us if necessary. I'm nothing to say. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. I have nothing to say. This is the letter the police found in Mr. Vogel's pocket. Fabio wrote it. Do you know anything about it? I don't. Although I can feel Fabio's energy, it's there, but it refuses to let me analyze it. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. I know I can handle the news. Are you done yet? Can I leave? I've no idea about that. I've read this letter from Fabio. It had no addressee, but it was found in Mr. Vogel's pocket. Werner? Strange. I didn't think the two of them corresponded. I'm sure there is some explanation. Would you care to read it? Call me superstitious, but I don't care to read a letter from a dead man. That's not something I know much about. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures.
Have you considered Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. Could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. Mr. Pinchetti, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. You are the majordomo of a rich mansion, and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing. You hide, under heavy makeup, a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means. Do you have money troubles? I do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. One can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? I don't actually know. Perhaps from a guest. Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always some uh, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. Please let me out. I recognize the key from the altar room among these. help you. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domo? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to die and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. 
Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. She died and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship. Please let me out. I've no idea about that. I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protégé wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchus? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten and touching washed away. I know I can handle the news. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not, I will persevere. 
I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for you being on a bender. Touché. I've nothing to say about this. This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Mancios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Mancios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Mancios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Mancios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? But what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel, he had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona's society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a stage murder was certainly not planned. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children. You had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust, love, so cruel and painful. And Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. Fabio played with your feelings. That was painful to realize. 
You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way that you would have liked. You wanted to be loved, but Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You were passionate, and so you struck him. Once you understood your mistake, it was too late. You were afraid, so you staged the ritual. With such a story, you might be sentenced to a few years. It might clean your conscience, and soon the case will be forgotten. No. No. This is my decision. I'll talk to Constable Oswald to see what I can do. I wish everything were different. There's no fool like an old fool. Kurt Manchios did it. A young boy played with the heart of an old man. The latter couldn't handle it. The evidence I obtained clearly shows that the quarrel was not intended to end badly. It was an accident. Showing pity towards your own kind, Holmes. <laughs> Whatever. All I'm saying is that prison won't take much away from an old and crushed man. Fine. A big name like that will still give me a promotion. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry? Oh, you did it, Sherlock! The case is closed and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo! It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decisions? Whatever the truth, it had to be revealed. The victim deserved it. Well, you seem confident in the value of your actions. I guess since I'm free, you were heard after all. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I'm failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous. Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems and power. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love and sanity. And it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? I take your point. There are some limits on us all, some compromises we must make. Despite my best efforts, we cannot remain entirely objective. I didn't want to sadden you, Sherlock, only to make you think beyond your boundaries. You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until then, I shall bid you adieu.